OpenAI might have just destroyed the AI automation agency business model. In this video, I'm going to be going over everything that was talked about at Dev Day, all the new features in ChatGPT, and why this might seriously jeopardize our AI automation agencies. My name is Brock Messer, a 22-year-old entrepreneur, documenting the process of me starting my AI automation agency. We have our first client. Full breakdown of the service delivery, and I want you guys to be able to follow along with somebody in the same shoes as you, so you guys can grow with somebody together. So if you guys haven't seen already, yesterday on November 6th, OpenAI actually held their first ever developer day. They went over some major, major things that they're gonna be integrating within OpenAI and ChatGPT that could potentially destroy our opportunity as AI automation agencies. So I'm gonna be breaking down everything they say. And then after that, I'll give you my recap on what my thoughts are. Okay guys, so I'm going to start this keynote here. I skipped in about 20 minutes in to get to the stuff that really affects us as AI automation agency owners. And so yeah, let's start watching this. Analyze data, take and generate images and much more. And we heard your feedback, that model picker, extremely annoying. That is gone starting today. You will not have to click around the drop down menu. All of this will just work together. So that's first of all, good news for anybody that uses ChatGPT because obviously it got in the way when you had to check plugins and go to a plugin and have it search the web and um, all that different stuff. Now it apparently does it all through the chat within ChatGPT, which is good news. ChatGPT will just know what to use and when you need it. But that's not the main thing. Uh, and neither was price actually the main. The this is where things get interesting. This is what's gonna affect us. Talk about where we're headed and the main thing we're here to talk about today. We believe that if you give people better tools, they will do amazing things. We know that people want AI that is smarter, more personal, more customizable, can do more on your behalf. And that is what we as AI automation agency owners offer. That's kind of what our value proposition in the market is. These capabilities are often talked in the AI field about as agents. The upsides of this are going to be tremendous. We're thrilled to introduce GPTs. GPTs are tailored versions of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. You can build a GPT, a customized version of ChatGPT for almost anything. There we go. I'm gonna show more of this, obviously. I just wanna give my quick thoughts. You are able now to create your own GPTs is what they call it, create your own custom chatbot. Um, and that completely takes out the opportunity for us as AI automation agency owners to offer chatbots. And I've been talking about that a lot on my channel um, as I dive into this business model and I try to make this business model work for me. So this is interesting. Let's see more about what they're talking about. With instructions, expanded knowledge and actions, and then you can publish it for others to use. And because they combine instructions, expanded knowledge and actions, they can be more helpful to you. They can work better in many contexts and they can give you better control. They'll make it easier for you to accomplish all sorts of tasks or just have more fun. So what he said about you could create your own and you could publish it to use others or for others to use it, that completely commoditizes the, the market of chatbots because now your clients could then go onto this custom um, ChatGPT app store and just download these chatbots that tailor to them and their industry. And you'll be able to use them right within ChatGPT. You can in effect program a GPT with language just by talking to it. It's easy to customize the behavior so that it fits what you want. This makes building them very accessible and it gives agency to everyone. We're gonna show you what GPTs are, how to use them, how to build them, and then we're gonna talk about how they'll be distributed and discovered. So before he shows a breakdown of him actually using this and him creating one, that is a massive point. You could use text now to create these things. You could essentially type, create me a chatbot for my accounting company that could read these numbers and send information to Slack and notify whenever there's an update or something. And it will do that on the spot with ChatGPT. You just type, type it in. There's no more of creating custom nodes and all this stuff and making it extremely complex. It's now at the at our fingertips literally to be and then after that for developers we're going to show you how to build these agent-like experiences into your own apps so first let's look at a few examples canva has built a gpt that lets you start designing by describing what you want in natural language if you say make a poster for dev a dev date reception this afternoon this evening and you give it some details It'll generate a few options to start with by hitting Canvas APIs. Now this concept may be familiar to some of you. We've evolved our plugins to be custom actions for GPTs. You can keep chatting with this to see different iterations. And when you see one you like, you can click through to Canva for the full design experience. So that makes 
content creation extremely easy now instead of having to go and create graphic design things on canva which i spend a lot of time for all my different businesses doing now you can just do it via chat um it's pretty crazy because that completely is going to change graphic designers jobs because we all know it's going to be not that far down the line where there's no need for a graphic designer because you could just use ai to do it in seconds um so that's kind of the first view into that kind of cool that it's directly in chat gpt it's not a plugin app here has built a gpt the, this is interesting. Actions ...across 6,000 applications to unlock all kinds of integration possibilities. So let's get started. So to start, where your GPT will live is on this upper left corner. I'm going to start with clicking on the Zapier AI Actions. And on the right hand side, you can see that's my calendar for today. To start, I can ask, what's on my schedule for today? GPT is designed to take in your instructions Make the decision on which capability to call to perform that action and then execute that for you. So you can see right here, it's already connected to my calendar. It pulls into my, my information and then I've also prompted it to identify conflicts on my calendar. I actually was able to identify that. So it looks like I have something coming up. So what if I want to let Sam know that I have to leave early? So right here I say, let Sam know. That scheduling thing right there, that is something that I actually am in the process of building out for a client. It was a $997 project and $97 a month, and I'm making a video on it. So, but that's exactly what I'm building him. I'm building something where he could pe have people for his martial arts gym book directly to his calendar uh, via the chat conversation. And that is exactly what you could do now. And this is all connected with Zapier. Uh, I don't know. So with that, I'm gonna swap to my conversation with Sam. Sam, did you get that? I did. Awesome. This is only a glimpse of... So now you can see you could build these AI chatbots, these AI agents that could perform tasks on ChatGPT natively, um, which is insane. Like you could see that Zapier example. You could essentially connect these different apps and just say, hey, text Sam that I'm not going to be able to make the meeting because I have to go. I have to do this thing. And then automatically we'll send that to him because all these apps are connected and the ChatGPT uses all of that and just basically has access to send information. Um, instead of us having to go and make Z Zapier uh, automations or make automations, now you're just gonna be able to do it within this chatbot. Um, and the chatbot could even do it for you if you prompt it to build this out for you. These are things that in the AI automation agency business model, people are charging thousands and thousands of dollars for, and that is where the big opportunity is. Now it's completely commoditized and now it is all accessible to anyone and everyone that knows how to use ChatGPT. Um, and I have been saying this is where the business model is going. Um, so now we're seeing a live kind of impact of how it's actually gonna impact us. Of what is possible. And I cannot wait to see what you all will build. In addition to these, there are many more kinds of GPTs that people are creating and many, many more that will be created soon. We know that many people who want to build the GPT don't know how to code. We've made it so that you can program the GPT just by having a conversation. We believe that natural language is gonna be a big part of how people use computers in the future, and we think this is an interesting early example. So I'd like to show you how to build one. So I wanna create a GPT uh, that helps give founders and developers advice when starting new projects. So this is cool. We can see exactly how easy it is to now make chatbots. This, again, used to take hours and this is something you could charge thousands of dollars for and now you could just use natural language to type this out and build it i'm going to go to create a gpt here and this drops me into the gpt builder uh, i worked with founders for years at yc and still whenever i meet developers the questions i get are always about how do i you know think about a business idea can you give me some advice uh i'm going to see if i can build a gpt to help with that to start gpt builder asks me what i want to make and i'm going to say i want to help startup founders think through their business ideas. All right, so to start off, I just tell the GPT a little bit about, about what I want here. And it's gonna go off and start thinking about that. And it's gonna write some detailed instructions for the GPT. Um, it's also gonna ask me about a name. How do I feel about Startup Mentor? That's fine, uh, that's good. So if I didn't like the name, of course I could call it something else, but it's you know gonna try to have this conversation with me and, and start there. And you can see here on, uh, on, on the right in the preview mode that it's already starting to fill out the GPT, where it says what it does, it has some like ideas of additional questions that I could ask. You know what, I actually, so it just generated a candidate. Okay. So that's crazy. You could even create like a profile picture or, um, 
just using the natural language. Obviously, it's using Dolly to do that, but it's cool. It's awesome how you can see the left side of the screen is him uh, building this thing out and giving the prompt of how to create this thing. And then the right side, you could actually see the um, the kind of not finished product, but a prototype of what exactly it looks like. And you could see it built out in real time. I am going to upload transcripts of some lectures about startups I have given. Please give advice based off of those. So now uh, it's gonna go figure out how to do that. And I would like to show you the configure tab. So you can see some of the things that were built out here as we were going um, by, by the builder itself. And you can see that there's capabilities here that I can enable. Um, uh, so here is a lecture that I that I used to that I gave. So there you have it. It's extremely easy to uh, upload a knowledge base now. Obviously, anybody can now upload any knowledge base to this. Startup advice, um, and I'm going to add that here. Um, I'm going to add one more thing to the instructions here, which is be concise. So, again, if we had more time, I'd show you a bunch of other things. But this is uh, this is like a decent start, and now uh, we can try it out over on this preview tab. So I will say, uh, what are three things to look? What are three things to look for when hiring employees an early stage startup? Now it's going to look at the document I uploaded. Um, it'll also have, of course, all of the background knowledge of GPT-4. That's pretty good. Those are three things that I definitely have said many times. Uh, I'm going to publish this only to me for now. Uh, I can work on it later. I can add more content. I can add a few actions that I think would be useful, um, and then I can share it publicly. So that's what it looks like to create a GPT. Thank you. So with GPTs, we're letting people easily share and discover all the fun ways that they use ChatGPT with the world. You can make private GPTs like I just did, or you can share your creations publicly with a link for anyone to use. See, this is really interesting. This is where it gets into the app store of actually being able to create these things and sell them and you know license them out to other people and also use other people's pre-built templates. And later this month, we're gonna launch the GPT store. You can list a GPT there and we'll be able to feature the best and the most popular GPTs. Revenue sharing is important to us. We're gonna pay people who build the most useful and the most used GPTs a portion of our revenue. We're excited to foster a vibrant ecosystem with the GPT store. Just from what we've been building ourselves over the weekend, we're confident there's gonna be a lot of great stuff. We're excited to share more information soon. So the rev sharing is actually pretty interesting because it's kind of like the app store of Apple where um, they'll kind of share the revenue a little bit. So uh, say you launch these things for free and then how, based on the use of how much they're used via the token costs or something, they're gonna kick you a rev share percentage or something, um, which is kind of interesting. Maybe there's a business model within that of being able to create these you know, amazing bots, releasing it to the marketplace and then having people buy those or use those and then you get compensated for that, which in a way could potentially create less friction between you, say, instead of having to sell every single, each individual AI solution, you could just put it up on a marketplace kind of like a Fiverr sort of thing and scale by doing that but who knows I don't even know if that'll be a viable way to make money and we can't wait to see what you build but this is a developer conference and the coolest thing about this is that we're bringing the same concept to the API for example Shopify sidekick which lets you take actions on the platform discords Clyde lets discord moderators create custom custom personalities for and snaps my AI a customized chatbot that can be added to group chats and make recommendations. These experiences are great, but they have been hard to build. Sometimes taking months, teams of dozens of engineers, there's a lot to handle to make this custom assistant experience. So today we're making that a lot easier with our new assistance API. The assistance API includes persistent threads, so they don't have to figure out how to deal with long conversation history, built-in retrieval, code interpreter, a working Python interpreter in a sandbox environment, and of course, the improved function calling that we talked about earlier. So we'd like to show you a demo of how this works. Today, we're launching new modalities in the API, but we are also very excited to improve the developer experience for you all to build assistive agents. So let's dive right in. Imagine I'm building Wanderlust, a travel app for global explorers, and this is the landing page. I've actually used GPT-4 to come up with these destination ideas, and these illustrations are generated programmatically using the new DALI 3 API available to all of you today. So it's pretty, Remarkable. But let's enhance this app by adding a very simple assistant to it. This is the screen. We're going to come back to it in a second. First, I'm going to switch over to the new assistant's playground. Creating an assistant is easy. You just give it a name, some initial instructions, a model. In this case, I'll pick GPT-4 Turbo. And here, I'll also go ahead and select some tools. I'll turn on Code Interpreter 
and retrieval and save. And that's it. Our assistant is ready to go. And in action, if I say, hey, let's go to Paris. All right, that's it. With just a few lines of code, users can now have a very specialized assistant right inside the app. And I'd like to highlight one of my favorite features here, function calling. If you have not used it yet, function calling is really powerful. And you can invoke multiple functions at once for the first time. So here, if I carry on and say, hey, what are the top 10 things to do? I'm going to have the assistant respond to that again. And here, what's interesting is that the assistant knows about functions, including those to annotate the map that you see on the right. And so now all of these pins are dropping in real time here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And that integration allows our natural language interface to interact fluidly with components and features of our app. And it truly showcases now the harmony you can build between AI and UI where the assistant is actually taking action. That's pretty crazy because if you're developing web applications or something, you are now able to integrate a language model into it. I was actually speaking with somebody yesterday who builds out custom software and he was looking for a way to have AI into inter integrated with what he offers. And I was like, you know, I don't think there's anything out there yet that we could actually help with. And this is kind of an exact example of what it is that he's looking to uh, be able to do, which is just, I don't know, pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, let's keep watching. In fact, I got inspired and I already booked my tickets to, uh, <clears throat> to Paris. So I'm just gonna drag and drop here this PDF. What it's uploading, I can just sneak peek uh, at it. Very typical United flight ticket. And behind the scene here, what's happening is that Retrieval is reading these files and boom, the information about this PDF appeared on the screen. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. It just creates interactive applications, which I mean, there's probably a huge opportunity being able to offer this as an AI automation agency or a developing company or something. And this is of course a very tiny PDF, but assistants can parse long form documents from extensive text to intricate product specs, depending on what you're building. In fact, I also booked an Airbnb, so I'm just gonna drag that over to the conversation as well. And by the way, we've heard from so many of you developers how hard that is to build yourself. You typically need to compute your embeddings. You need to set up chunking algorithm. Now all of that is taken care of. And there's more than retrieval. With every API call, you usually need to resend the entire conversation history, which means, you know, setting up a key value store. That means like handling the context window, serializing mess. And I bring up my terminal log so you can see what's happening behind the scenes. So I'm gonna call it there and now I'm gonna do just kind of a quick recap of this. Obviously what they unveiled at Dev Day yesterday is pretty crazy. There's a bunch of different things, but the main things that we wanna focus on with our AI automation agency and what's really gonna affect us is these custom um, GPTs of what they wanna call it. So anybody now can make their own chatbots with language. So essentially they could just text, create these things via text. And that's pretty crazy because you don't need to have somebody with technical skills to be able to connect all these different things. It sounds like they're gonna be able to integrate directly with Zapier, which could integrate with all these different apps. So custom chatbots now kind of don't really have a point because people could go ahead, build them themselves, or they could just go onto the, the OpenAI or the GPT store and just download one of these apps themselves. So honestly, I don't know necessarily what this is going to present for the AI automation agency uh, business model. Obviously, there's going to be opportunities that come out of this. It's just what is the opportunity? And this is something I'm still digesting um, all this stuff that they released. So I can't sit here and tell you, here's how we can make money with this. But I can tell you the things that are going to affect us in a poor way. Um, and that is that chatbots are just completely overplayed at this point. And I've made a few videos on this and people resonate with it. And it's about staying on the cutting edge of this new technology and finding the different areas where you can make money with it. And so again, this presents potentially some opportunities. We don't know necessarily what, but I want to make this video. I wanted to go over this, you know, because it was really, I mean, it's going to change the game and change a lot of things in our world. So yeah, I wanted to make this. Thank you guys so much for following along. If you guys want to follow along with somebody that is growing an AI automation agency from the beginning and documenting the whole process, make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. But yeah, guys, thank you so much. And I look forward to continue growing our agencies together. See you guys in the next video.